10 years. It took Apple 10 years to figure out that the web wasn't going to adapt to the iPad, but it will have to be the other way around. Now, I love my iPad and Safari is definitely one of the most used apps for me and also for a lot of people, I think. But even with iPad OS, it's not entirely clear if everything works as it does on a desktop. So we're going to visit a bunch of websites and see how far has the iPad come and if the experience is really comparable to a Mac. Okay, starting simple, Amazon loads up fine. I don't think it's any different from what you see on a computer. Yeah, it works perfectly. The images work. Uh, yeah, I can zoom over images. These tiny drop down arrows also work. Now going a little more complex, these travel booking websites can be a lot to handle. And, and it seems to work just fine. Yes, it's the exact same version as on the MacBook. Uh, let's try out the map view, because that's something I suspect to be broken on the iPad. And it works totally fine. I would never have expected that to work, but it does. Now I know there are apps for basically everything on the web, but the thing with that is the experience is usually not the same and almost always not as functional as the website itself. And having access to the full experience can be rather important if it's your only device. Now another new feature in iOS 13, you can save a bookmark for all these open tabs if you need access to them. And yes, you can have at most two tabs or windows open at the same time. You could open an extra and slide over but that behaves more like an iPhone. Now Google Docs is a big one, even though I don't use it much. See that? That's what it does for a lot of things when I have an app for that. And there's basically no control or setting to prevent this from happening. So what I have to do sometimes is to delete the app to access the website. Yeah, how ridiculous is that? For Google Docs though, if you put in the address directly, it loads up perfectly fine. Okay, so the new text selection gestures don't seem to work here in Docs. And it looks like it's gonna be a nightmare if you need to select text. You press and hold to bring up the right click menu. These upper tabs and menus though work okay. Also uploads are handled now with the files app so you can upload anything from the iPad or you could drag and drop if the website supports it. It does work quite well And you can also print something out. But the printer needs to support air print for it to really work. It will simply download the PDF to the files app. Now that download manager is a thing.
Okay, so it's fairly similar to Docs. And I can see having a keyboard does make quite a bit of difference here. Yep, right click by holding down. Menus work all right. Then there are the random websites that you access once in a while, like maybe government websites, most of which are built a long time ago and rarely updated. But I can click and navigate through these just fine. iOS 13 also expanded the keyboard shortcuts. Now another thing is for the elements where you would hover a mouse to access some information, you tap on it instead on the iPad. Okay, WordPress seems to be optimized for the iPad, but it looks the same on macOS, so can't really say. But anyways, the text selection seems to work here just fine. The menus and blocks also work as expected. Frankly, I don't use WordPress for work or anything, but it appears quite capable here. YouTube Studio is also very much functional on the iPad. I use it every day and it's much better than the app. I can look at the analytics, my videos. These sliders though are a little finicky. And now I found out that the thumbnail button isn't working. I don't know if it's the new studio or the iPad, but it's completely broken. And that's the sentiment really. When anything doesn't work, I am not so sure if it's the website or the iPad. Also the drop down menus have historically been the worst to navigate on the iPad. But now it works okay. I can type in with a keyboard or go up or down with the arrow keys. Now the more I've used Safari on iPad, I found that accessing the desktop version of a website isn't always a great idea. Some websites really do work better with their mobile version on the iPad. It's rare though. Okay, after all of this, you should have a pretty good idea what the desktop class safari can do on the iPad. Does it support 100% of the web? Certainly not. But most of it, I think yes.